And staying with the stock market, global stock markets plunged after the release of disappointing U.S. job data on Friday. Analysts are now hinting at a recession. We spoke with one such analyst, Vance Ginn, former chief economist at the Office of Budget and Management. Vance Ginn, it's good to have you back on the show. The number of jobs added was below expectations, according to this recent jobs report. What does that tell us about the economy right now? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you, and, and you're right. The, the number of jobs was added was 114,000 non-farm jobs across the month of July, well below expectations of 185,000. And when you dig deeper into that, um, a lot of the, there was 29,000 jobs that were revised down in the previous two months, and then you also had 17,000 jobs of government jobs. So if you just looked at productive private sector jobs, it was only 68,000 jobs in the month of July. So that's well below expectations. And it's indicative of a slowing labor market, slowing economy, and the unemployment rate jumped up from 4.1 to 4.3%. And it's up from 3.5% just a year ago. So we're seeing a huge increase in the unemployment rate as more people are losing their jobs and not as many people getting jobs. And so that's a signal that, you know, we may be looking at a pretty hard landing, a recession um, I might even throw out there, given some of these numbers that are coming out. So yeah, you're talking about this uh, idea of a soft landing versus a hard landing coming off the pandemic. Can you explain a bit more about that, that bigger longer term picture? Yeah, so there's been a lot of talk over the last you know, couple of years, really, about a soft landing where maybe the Federal Reserve has been able to land us, <laughs> uh, land the plane softly and not have a severe recession, even as the, the fiscal policy and monetary policy propped us up over the last couple of years with all this excessive government spending and federal budget deficits and the, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet going to $9 trillion. Well, but now there's more indication that this is not going to be a soft landing. It's going to be more of a hard landing where you feel it whenever you hit the floor. And we're seeing that in, this, in the labor market slowing down, the stock market showing some signs of weaknesses as well. And if all these things come together, we could see a harder landing for GDP growth. And for the next couple of quarters could be really tough to get through without massive you know, job losses and everything else. So I think it's another time where Americans, you know, got to bunker down a little bit, make sure that they have their budget in line with what they want to spend and their savings and everything else. So that way they're in a better position to handle whatever happens. Now, you're saying this could be a bit of a rough landing or we could have a rough next few months or maybe even years. Um, can you paint us a clearer picture of what that could look like, how things could play out in the near future? Yeah, I think what this means is that we're probably going to have, you know, uh, GDP, so gross domestic product, the economic output of the economy will contract for a couple of quarters, um, if not more than that. We can see job losses. We haven't had any job losses lately on, on net, uh, and so that could be something else to watch. And when you look at household employment, household employment is about flat over the last year. And so what I think we'll see is more job losses, unfortunately, less economic growth, and a weaker economy across the economy, uh, across across the country. And, and some states are going to do better than others. You know, I think I live in Texas. I think Texas will do better than California. You start seeing the red states versus blue states and the different sort of progressive policies that you might have out there in the economy. And so this is something that the Federal Reserve and others in D.C. will want to watch. But look, at the end of the day, we've got to do something about our excessive government spending, running massive deficits. And the amount of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet still being $7.2 trillion, there's a lot of money that's sloshing around the economy that's been holding things up for a while. And now I think we're starting to see the bottom coming out to a harder uh, landing for the economy. Yeah, we're talking about potential cuts here. I mean, the federal government, by and large, hasn't been able to get that done in any very vigorous way in the past few years, at least. Um, from what you're seeing on Capitol Hill, is there any movement towards that right now? Very little, unfortunately. I mean, even the presidential candidates, so I haven't been talking much about government, cut, cutting government spending, which I wish they would. There's even some on the right who, historically, the GOP has been more fiscally conservative, but some of the quote-unquote new right have said, you know what, uh, we need more spending, we, we need to raise taxes. And I think those are the bad things. You don't want to do that right now when the economy is already slowing down and potentially contracting very soon. What we need are more pro-growth policies, less government spending, lower taxes, less regulation, and, 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 and less of a, a money supply growth throughout the economy. And that will allow for corrections to happen and a robust, more robust economy that will let people prosper for the future. 
All right, we'll see what happens. Vance Ginn, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a great day.